It's actually really interesting. I kind of got into disc golf because it's a similar thing as building a pedal board. You're building your disc golf bag. Yeah, yeah. My first disc was a DX Colt and a DX Wraith. It doesn't take a lot for me to get into hobbies. So yeah. I was like, this is awesome. So Hunter said that you kind of like fluffed up your camera experience like in your like <laughs> basically what happened there was so i could not leave the creators cup without getting a round in with connor kennedy foundation disc golf's beloved cameraman and editor and we got to talk about how we got started in disc golf and that transition from like the music world to disc golf and what how that relates to one another as well as some of his favorite youtube channels where he gets some creative inspiration from in his editing style we also got to talk about how he got into like cameras and video editing in general and of course i had to confront him about how he lied to hunter about his video editing experience to kind of get his side of the story so let's get into it some kind of octopus or tentacle or something. Oh yeah, it's time like, code? Yeah, does the, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, where it, Those are sweet. Yeah, it's very cool, because it syncs everything, and you can attach up to like eight mics to it. Yeah. And, but they're like, I mean, I think those. I think it's like four grand. Yeah, the thing I like about these two, because like I'm like a huge, well, wait, I guess we can talk about it <laughs> once we start the recording. <laughs> oh, I already started. Oh, you already started it? Yeah. Oh, so we're good. We're cutting this down so yeah. I can just hit record. So we're, and go. Yeah, we're, so. uh, but yeah, I love the thing I love about this, like, since I'm like a beginner, like, I'm interested in the, all this tech and stuff. Uh huh. And so it's like easy for me to like pick it up because, like, I love it. Yeah. Um, but like, I'm still a beginner. It's so, like, I'm not an expert in audio, but these mm. have like 32 bit float audio, so I don't have to worry about setting levels on these at all. Oh, it's, that's like, cool. It's very cool. I never, because like, that's the thing with the DJI or the, the go-to that I'm worried about is like, I'm gonna set bad levels and they're gonna peak and then I'm, it's gonna be useless and I'm not gonna yeah. know until like, <laughs> I've done three hours of recording and none of this audio is useful. <laughs> <laughs> I have noticed, Bro Brody gave us the wireless goes and he was like, I can't get them to sound good. I don't think they sound good. And I used them one time, I was like, I, I think these sound great. Yeah. <laughs> I think he just had like a setting weird on him or both. Yeah. Like, oh, you can't have them back now. <laughs> All right, third try on this hole. Let's see if I can actually yeah. get it this time. You how's, wanna... your, how's your arm feeling? Pretty good. Pretty good. You feeling yeah. warm or are you feeling sore? I'm I'm feeling like I'm like not I'm a little past warm, but I'm not quite sore. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. You're hot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't say that because that would imply me getting birdies. So. <laughs> Let's see how. Oh, that looks That's good. Too, way too short though. <laughs> good shot. That'll putt, but. <laughs> Yeah, I threw a mid on this hole yesterday, and it didn't quite get me there. Yeah. So I'm going to go with something a little faster. You tried any of these Clash discs? No, I haven't. They're like, pretty sweet. I, got, I picked up a, like a mint. Or no, is it? Yeah, yeah, the Clash disc mint. Uh-huh, yeah. And I haven't thrown it I like yet, the though. mint okay. It's like just not quite as overstable as I want it to be. Yeah. This soda is like pretty flippy. I just think it looks really cool. Flies really nice. Yeah. Get out. Oh, yeah. Decent. Oh, yeah. Oh, Dude. yeah. That's it has to be like 20. Here, you have to putt. <laughs> but. So, the cameraman. Yeah. You're, so, have you always been like into cameras or is that something you kind of just picked up recently? It's like, actually. That is the story behind that. It's definitely very recent for me. Yeah. Um, I've been working at Foundation probably. Total probably a year and a half, almost two years. Yeah. And um, only got into cameras probably three months before I started working at Foundation. Yeah. My brother-in-law, he was a videographer most of my life. And I remember him being really excited about it. And so I would help him with videos, but like mainly just like do all the other things, like help him hold stuff. I wouldn't do anything with the cameras. Yeah. So I always thought it was really cool that he was into them, but I was never into them myself until really right before I started working at Foundation. Yeah. Yeah. See, every time I've thrown this hole, I'm like, I can get my buzz there. Every time I'm like, <laughs> I'm like here. <laughs> I, yeah. My problem is I used to be able to throw my mid ranges way further than I do now. Yeah. So every time I step into a hole, I'm like, mm, just disc up. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, get it. Oh, oh, let's oh, go. Come on. 
It's like the first putt I've made all day. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only don't, one that matters. So don't think I'm good at putting. That's the exactly. only one that matters. No, you were the best putter I've ever met. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now it's going to be even worse whenever I miss this one. Yep, that's right on brand. <laughs> he made it. <laughs> right on brand. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, we'll put it in. <laughs> so, so Hunter, Hunter said that you kind of like fluffed up your camera experience, like in your like. <laughs> well, I already told you I j only just started getting into cameras when yeah. I worked at the foundation. Basically, what happened there <laughs> was. I, I knew Hunter and Trevor from being on the disc golf team with them in college. Yeah. That's where I met them. Okay. Uh, wasn't really friends with Trevor, only kind of knew him, and uh, was kind of friends with Hunter. Yeah. And, um, but then they started Foundation. I thought that was cool. I watched Foundation because it was like my friends on there and everything. Yeah. And I was about to graduate. I was a semester away from graduating, and I was getting married a week after graduation. Yeah. So I was like, I need a job just to like get some money before I graduate. So I was just looking for something part time. And I just texted Hunter or actually I didn't even have his number. I group meet Hunter and yeah. I was like, hey, do you need any like extra hands for like stocking shelves and stuff? Just reaching out to him about okay. that. And he was like, no, but we actually do need an editor if you have any experience editing. Had really weird that he would even ask me that because I didn't and <laughs> so you, you didn't even bring it up I, like, I did I said actually yeah I do have experience editing I would love to do that because I had just started getting into editing yeah and I had edited one video that's one experience video. that was it one video you said some experience that's yeah. some experience. but I had watched a lot of YouTube videos yeah. <laughs> and so I totally lied and was like yeah I've got I've got experience with that <laughs> I'm not totally lied but a little bit and then, I went out and shot the video, and the very first video I shot was uh, drilling holes in discs. And the subscriber seemed to like the video okay, so he texted me like a week later and was like, hey, like the video went well, we would love to like hire you part time. And I was like, yeah. sick, that's awesome. And then I only told him recently that I was, no, he def <laughs> def it was definitely more than recently, but yeah. after he trusted me, I was like, yeah, I, I have not been doing this very long, Hunter. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> So I had to just like figure everything out while we were yeah. going, and so it was it yeah. was it was fun. Where's this basket? It's to the right, really Ooh, far. Oh, okay, okay. So, all right, you go for it, two man. <laughs> I think this might be my first birdie today. I don't, I, I haven't been keeping track, but I think that might be my first birdie today. Because <laughs> I haven't made a single putt. That is not going to be oh. a birdie. Not at all. Got to throw it in. <laughs> I'm just gonna go with this soda again. Oh yeah. No reason to fix something that's not broken. Oh, that's too flippy. Huh? Oh yeah. Make it work. <laughs> so what what uh gear do you guys use for so for I, filming? Um, we use for all of our uh videos we use my personal camera. Yeah. Which is the Sony A6400. Okay. Great beginner cameras. First yeah. camera I ever had. Uh -huh. um, but I was like, I'm kind of like you, where like I don't like to just like, if I'm getting into something, I want to like really get into it. Yeah. So like I didn't want to get like a crappy camera. Uh -huh. So I looked up like which was going to be like the best like cheap camera, and cheap relatively. But it's a it's a good like beginner price point. Yeah. But you know it does 4K. It does. 120 frames per second. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's, it looks really good. I, I like using it. Yeah. I think we're finally starting to maybe outgrow it a little bit more. Yeah. Just because some of our videos that we do, I want to be able to have 4K at higher frame rates. Yeah. But mm -hmm. overall, it's treated us really well. I love the camera. Yeah. My parents bought it for me for Christmas. Nice. <laughs> See if I can keep this birdie streak alive from 200 feet away. <laughs> that's not it. Oh, that'll work. That's not it. <laughs> you're, that, that's within like 60, so you're, you'll probably make <laughs> <Yeah>. it. <laughs> I appreciate the confidence. How uh, long have you been playing disc golf? Uh, I started, so I started, and I'm the one here casting questions. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I started, uh, so like I played a little bit in high school, uh -huh. Like, but it was just like, 
grab a destroyer with one finger and like chuck it. Yeah, yeah, type yeah. thing. And it wasn't until 2012 I went and saw the Kansas City Wide Open because uh, that's where I'm from. I'm from Kansas City. Okay. And I saw a card with it was Dave Feldberg, Will Schustrick, Jeremy Colling, and Paul McBeth. Dang, that's a fun on the card. lead card. That is a fun um, card. Where did I don't? Okay, yeah, I do not know where I am. I didn't think you went in the bush. Oh gosh. Did I not? But I also I wasn't paying right. too close attention. Did I get this far? Crap, now, I'm, now I feel bad for not paying closer attention. I have an excuse. Yeah, you have an excuse. You were facing the other way. I mean, it definitely went right. Did you hit this tree? Oh, got it, got it. Okay, sweet. It's like avocado green. Thank you. Avocado yeah. green, that's a good way to describe it. That is right there. You got a little, stick your foot in it. Oh, nice. It's not deep in these bushes. These bushes are mean. Yeah. Like, not as mean as it could be. They don't have thorns, but. I heard somebody told us that you'll never get through the magnolia trees. And then I came up with the phrase that whenever you hit the magnolia trees, you know that your game is a fixer upper. <laughs> get it? Because uh, Chip and Joanna Gaines. <laughs> I know jo Joanna. I was just making sure. I, that, maybe not everybody understands that joke, yeah. but I was very proud of it. Yeah, my, my family's Hunter obsessed and Trevor with didn't, fixer upper. They didn't think it was funny. <laughs> Did they not? Did they not understand it, or were no, they, they just like, no, it. we understood it. That was just a bad joke. They, sometimes <laughs> they rarely don't understand my joke. Sometimes they just don't want to give me the laugh. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh. In their defense, they're not always funny. <laughs> but yeah, it was it was really funny, like watching that car because I had never, I had no idea what the pros were. Yeah. No idea, and. Like, I saw them all and I was like amazed by like Will Schustrick was like throwing a putter on one where I like forehanded a destroyer, yeah. you know? And I'm just like, what the heck? And it was funny because afterwards I was like, they were all really good, but that guy did not belong on this card. I was like, I don't, he was not good enough. It was Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Later I found out that literally that tournament, like it was on his documentary uh -huh. about, uh, Cause he had, that was, that was the first year he won Worlds. Mm -hmm. And he had like a documentary and he, he talked about it at the Kansas City Wide Open in 2012, he tore his meniscus. <laughs> and so literally I was watching him play on That was when he was straddle a, putting, I yeah, think, yeah. That, I was literally watching him, he had just, he had, so he had just torn his meniscus like the day before. So like, that's why he played so <laughs> bad. But like, yeah, I just remember like I was there, I was like, these guys are good. That guy was. <laughs> that guy stinks. That guy was in, <laughs> he was all right. That's hilarious, <laughs> that's so funny. And now I'm like, all about Paul McBeth. <laughs> <laughs> that's way too Ooh. short, way too short. So when did, when did you get into disc golf? I started playing about, probably almost six years ago. Okay. I started playing my senior year of high school because I had a lot of free time. And um, my, me and my girlfriend had just broken up yeah. So I had a lot of free time. That girlfriend is now my wife, by the way. I was, I was gonna ask that. I was like, <laughs> so we broke up for a, for like a year, and I just hung out with my guy friends a ton, and we were like, hey, what's this disc golf thing? We went and play, we picked up a couple of discs from Dick Sporting Goods. I my first disc was a DX Colt and a DX Wraith. Yeah. And we went and played at a course, and I. It doesn't take a lot for me to get into hobbies. So yeah. I was like, this is awesome. And I went straight home and I pulled up YouTube videos on the TV of how to like, like backhand form yeah. and just practice form in my living room like the first day that I started playing because I was yeah. just obsessed with it. <laughs> and like I want to do everything to, to perfection. And so I figured out how to make my form look really good. Yeah. The disc does not go where I want it to, <laughs> but my form looks good. <laughs> yeah. It's fun though. It's very. I never ever thought I would be working in disc golf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's crazy. Oh, that might get lucky. Oh man. Now hit that tree. Well. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> I think it's getting to that point where I'm just like, <laughs> I, I, it, it's so weird. Disc golf's the only thing that I've experienced this in. It's like. If you would have, if you ask me, I feel fine. Yeah. But like then you throw, throw it, then you throw, and I'm just like, 
my body's not fine. Like I'm not throwing it. As it's so well difficult as it in a sport where like timing is everything. Yeah. Because if you're just like a little bit fatigued, then your timing is gonna yeah. be off. It's like I don't like if you would ask me, are you fatigued right now? I'm like, no. Yeah. But then I throw, I'm just like, I am not. Yeah, my body's just not, not communicating it. well. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> so speaking of working in disc golf, like if you if you weren't working in disc golf, like where do you think you would be? Like what would you be pursuing? So I uh, I went to school for music. Okay. Actually, I, that was like my thing my entire life was, I started taking guitar lessons when I was seven years old and um, just did music my entire life and always knew exactly what I wanted to do. Yeah. And so I went to school for music um, and it was between, I was either going to graduate and just go ahead and start touring as an artist or Ooh. I was going to find a church to work at as a worship leader. Okay. And so um, that was always the plan though. Uh, I was actually going to move to Atlanta, Georgia to try to get a job at a, at a big church there. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, then I ended up going full time at Foundation or they like Hunter offered for me to go full time. And I was like, I still like, I love doing this so much. Yeah. It's so much fun. I was like, yeah. I'll find opportunities to play music. I'm not going to find opportunities to work for a disc golf YouTube channel yeah. like anywhere else. So <laughs> yeah. like, I, I just stayed and it's great because I can do, now I can keep music as like my passion and yeah. like do that for fun. And like, I still like uh, lead at a church on the weekends but I can do disc golf as my full-time job and it's super, it's super fun. Yeah. It really is like an opportunity that I couldn't have written a better opportunity for myself. Like it, it worked out perfectly. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. I can. I think oh, that, good. I think uh, that'll put. Dang. <laughs> you got, you, that reminds me a lot of uh, Mikey from Overflow, from Overthrow disc yeah. golf. Him and I are very good friends. We, yeah. we don't live too far from each other probably 20 minutes and we like to have one wheel dates together but uh <laughs> he is like one of the best people i've ever met at doing the forehand with a putter yeah like just like a regular that, putter like that, that shot like forehand. it's easier for me because i played so much ultimate that in high makes school. sense yeah he, he played ultimate yeah. too so it makes sense yeah i was actually like uh pursuing youth ministry oh cool before this and then it's like i started taking like seminary stuff and i was like I don't know if I want to do that as my job. <laughs> yeah. No, not everybody's called to do it full time. Yeah. Not in a way where you get paid for it. Yeah. At least. Yeah. Oh, gosh. <laughs> but yeah, I was like, I got to the point, I was doing everything in like seminary and I was like, you know what? Like everything I'm passionate about with youth ministry, like you can do as a volunteer. Yeah. Like, yeah. And everything that I'm not a big fan of, is what you have to do as your job, mm -hmm. you know? So I'm like, yep. maybe it's not for me. <laughs> I definitely understand but. that. <laughs> so what is your full-time job right now? Um, I'll let you putt. Oh, that was beautiful. Thank you. That was clean. Oh. Yeah, I'm just an accountant. So, okay. Cool. Like basic accounts payable stuff. So nice. like I went to school for finance. So sweet. Uh, it was funny because like I literally was just like one of my dad's friends that was well off, and my dad was like, "Well, what do you want to do?" I was like, "Well, what does that person do? <laughs> like, what's his job?" Because I was like, "He makes a lot of money. Uh -huh. What's his job?" He's like, "Oh, he's a CFO Dang. somewhere or something." <laughs> and I was like, "Well, what do I have to do to do that?" He's like, "Finance, like." I'll do finance. <laughs> like, <laughs> and it's like, I have a degree and I'm just like, I, I don't, I'm not a big fan of the finance. Yeah. No. <laughs> like, I'm good at, like, if I had to do it, like I'm good at it. Mm -hmm. but, but yeah. Well, there's, so always, I, there's always a way to, there's always a way to like your job. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Oh yeah. I have no problems with my job mm -hmm. right now, but yeah, I was like, I, I wasn't pursuing what I was passionate about for college. Yeah, I was like, I, gotcha. I was like, how do I become rich? But then gotcha. I was like, now I'm just like, that doesn't. See, I didn't think about that enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was just like, I'm gonna be a rock star. <laughs> so I took a little thing from Hot Hot Ones and like uh -huh. scrolled your Instagram. Oh, nice. A little bit. Nothing controversial like Hot Ones, because <laughs> I'm not that kind of person. <laughs> but I saw. So you kind of already talked about it with music, but I saw like you had a picture of 
like your guitar with a bunch of pedals. Uh huh. Are you like really into pedals? I am. And stuff? Yeah. The whole I haven't guitar been stuff? as much lately. Uh, but yeah, that tri that's been a lot, big part of my life is guitar gear. Yeah. I love to talk my, guitar My tech. brother was really into that in high school, so like I kind cool. of like, I don't know the intricacies of it, but like I know it can be addicting and like... Oh, very much so. You can love guitar, then you can love guitar pedals. I have to say, I'm like, I, I'm a better guitar pedal, like guitar yeah. pedal board player than I am guitar player. Yeah, like, they, they're, is, and they're completely different. Yeah, you know, it's for like, sure. It's so crazy. It's very fun yeah. though. I love all the different effects and stuff. Yeah, you can, you know, okay. you can go. Mint Discs Bobcat. Coolest stamp ever. Cool that stock stamp. sick. The stock stamp, very cool. That is so sick. Oh, that might be, that might be it. That might be parked that or it might, might be a little right. Oh, that looks perfect. That might be in. Oh, I think I might have heard. That was him. close. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if like I heard just like something else over there. Or... If it, I don't. If I that don't hit know, the man. chains, it would have been loud. That was yeah. that was ripping. Um, Is that a pro but, pro discus disc? No, that was a zone. That was a zone. Okay. That was a zone. So what's like like how many how many pedals do you think you've like gone through? Like do you like cycle and like sell and buy and stuff, or are you just like? It's actually really interesting. I kind of got into disc golf because it's a similar thing as building a pedal board. You're building your disc golf bag. Yeah, yeah. So you've got different utility discs and stuff. Yeah. There's pedals that you would only use maybe once every hundred times that you play, but you still got to have it. Yeah. It's like a tilt. I think that pedal's my tilt. Yeah. And um, very similar to disc golf, whenever I first was into music, I was like, my pedal board's got to be perfect. I've got to be playing what all the pro musicians are playing. Yeah. And all that stuff. It's got to be a clean pedal board. But then, more recently, the past couple years, I'm like, no, I just want the weirdest, most rock and roll stuff on there. <laughs> so I started selling my super clean pedals. Yeah. I started buying these just like gritty, like weird indie pedals. Yeah. And I started doing that. And it's very similar with disc golf. I wanted to have my bag exactly like Paul McBeth's bag. Yeah. And then like this past year, I'm like, no, I want everything now it's like, weird. I want to like, be my personality. Yeah, like I've, yeah. I mean, now I just have the weirdest stuff in here. I've got a, <laughs> a Storm Discs crater. I've got Clash Discs. I've got a the Spirit with Scooby Doo on it. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, a, a Spirit. Can I see the Spirit? Oh, it's so stable. Yeah. It's, it's basically this a is fast basically tilt. like a tilt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I remember. I remember when. Uh, when Nico was sponsored by Gateway the first time, he would throw the Spirit. Yeah. And yeah, I was just like. Crazy flex lines. Like the, the Spirit is such a sweet name for a disc Yeah, it too. is cool. <laughs> it, it's super stable. Yeah. I like to throw I like to throw Gateway for the irony, but they do have some really good discs. Yeah. They're just harder to find. Oh. So what's like your most like prized possession pedal? That you oh, have, that you're like, I couldn't live without this. <laughs> I, I'm so glad I, like my life changed the day I bought this. <laughs> the, my life definitely, I waited way too long. So like, there's these, uh, these three pedals in the in the guitar world called that you would call the Trinity. Yeah. Or the, they actually you call it the Strifecta, because they're by a company called Strymon. Okay. And the Strymon Big Sky. Is like the most renowned reverb in the in the, the guitar pedal world. Yeah. And I waited way too long to buy one, and <laughs> but I just got one like within the last three years, and it just like it changed my life. I was like, well, how was how did I play for so long without having this? I was just I could probably take almost every effect pedal off my guitar off my pedal board. Oh, well, let's, let's wait. Let's <laughs> wait. Straight up construction. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's just throw this really fast and get down right, there. That sounds good. <laughs> oh, this is the one that you hang over the road. You don't have to. Oh, it's no, just you have little, to. It's just a little like. <laughs> it's gonna go. Yep. See, you don't Ooh. have to. <laughs> There's no cars coming, that's good. Oh, miss it. Oh, oh, that was also a spirit. That one's just like, <laughs> yeah, that one's a, a, like a factory second one. Gotcha. And so it's super warped on the top and made it flatter. And so it actually, it's still like more stable than a destroyer, but it's like usable as stable. Yeah. 
and it like goes really far for a forehand disc for me because I'm yeah. not a forehand guy. All right, so the reverb. Oh yeah. The Strymon. Strymon? Yeah, Strymon Big Re Sky. Go, Big Sky. It's a pretty yeah. expensive pedal, but it like, I could t probably take every effects pedal off my pedal board and just have some overdrives and the Big Sky and be completely happy, yeah. play whatever song. It's a fun world though. I haven't I haven't done a lot of research in it in a while. Yeah. But uh, even this conversation is doing it for me. <laughs> Might get me back into it. This is terrifying. Oh gosh, there's a I don't know what that is by here. Oh my gosh. Is that a wasp? I do not know. I'm just gonna stay away from it. <laughs> it's a casual round, you can throw it from anywhere, it doesn't matter. <laughs> In case you couldn't hear that, that was, the, whatever. that was the clanking of a, <laughs> a branch. branch right in front of you. I just wanted right. to have a little even upshot. Even Ricky Waisaki does that every once in a while. <laughs> he had one really bad one one year. Yeah, no, that's what I was referring to. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> you, either, you either got it or you didn't. Yep. <laughs> People watching it. Way short. Way too short. I was afraid to like launch it into the street. Oh, that was a beautiful, was trying, that was, was a beautiful bid. Trying to run it a little yeah. bit. Yeah, that was a beautiful bid. All right, so what about, what about the most expensive pedal? That you've, you don't have to say the price of it, but what is like the most expensive pedal you bought? That uh, Big Sky is probably the most expensive one. Oh I've yeah? Bought. Yeah, it's a, they're like, uh, they're like close to 500 bucks. Dang. Yeah. Yeah. Overall, I, do, I don't even want to say how much my whole pedal board is because it's so much money that I spent and now it just sits in my closet. Because <laughs> whenever I play, I usually play acoustic because I'm, oh, okay. I'm mainly a vocalist. Okay, and gotcha. So... so do you play other instruments other than the Thank guitar you. or are you just like, just guitar? Guitar. Your bread and butter. Guitar, piano, and vocals are my main, but I can, yeah. you know, I can, I can fiddle around on the banjo a good bit. I can yeah. play a little bit on the mandolin. I like the harmonica a lot. Yeah. I can hold my own on the drum set pretty well. If yeah. I, so you're one of those guys who just like, you get a hand in new instruments, it's like, I think I can figure this out. I can, I have start a, playing stuff and you're like, what the heck? <laughs> I have a pretty d decent ear for music. So I can, if I can figure out how to actually make a sound out of the instrument, I can probably figure out how to play something at least. Yeah, that's but cool. It's, it's fun, I, I love it. I've always been like jealous of people like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm jealous of people who- Oh, there was another hole. Oh yeah. We just, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, I mean. We're good, thank you. But yeah, I just now forgot. I don't think we played that. That's, that might be why Trevor's round went so fast. Because we, <laughs> yeah, uh, we skipped a hole. That's totally fine. <laughs> but yeah, I've, I was always jealous of the people who were really good at music theory. Oh, I've never, yeah. I've never been the book smarts person and music theory is very book smarts. Yeah. <sighs> Let's see. I can put this down there, but with how tired I am when I don't even know it. Yeah, but cool people throw butters. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's that's beautiful. That's too low. That's too low. Stay straight. Stay straight. Yeah. Oh, that's great. It's been oh, that's high. fine. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. That's a putt. That's a putt. That was for sure a cool guy throw. <laughs> this is not a cool guy throw because I'm throwing a gateway shaman. Shaman. Very weird disc, <laughs> but also very underrated. Straightest disc I've ever thrown. Oh yeah, just come out a little bit. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I got full flex and I'm short. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Gateway has so many of those like underrated discs. Yeah, it is. Just yeah, cause like, do. yeah. That Shaman is like, it'll just stay on whatever line you put it on. That right there is the first time I've ever seen it fade. And that's because I threw it pretty softly yeah. on like a little bit of Annie. Yeah. But like it doesn't flip. And it was high enough to where it kind of yeah. like stalled out a little bit. It doesn't flip. You throw it on hyzer hard, it's just gonna stay on that hyzer going straight. If you throw it flat, it's gonna stay flat. If you throw it on Annie, it's gonna stay, stay on Annie, but it won't change the way it flies through the flight. Yeah. Very cool disc. Yeah. Yeah, the first time, I think I got, the first time I ever tried Gateway was through David. Mm. And it wasn't yeah. just Wizards. Did yeah. you putt with Wizards? Yeah, I putted it for Wizards, with Wizards for That's a while. That's what I putt with now. Yeah. But you also used 
What was the maid you used? Okay, now oh, remember. the element? The element. Oh, that Dude, was pretty good, yeah. I would, I would shred with the element. I can't they get would, off of rocks. The whole, like, I was a, I was a, it's like a beat up rock. It's yeah. just feel, it's a lot shallower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had, I had rocks, and then, it, like, for my understable flippy stuff, I had elements. That's cool. So. Oh, oh that was going to be amazing. <laughs> that would have been incredible. That was too low. Oh. That was too low. That was a good bid. <laughs> that was a safe bid. <laughs> now I, I think I've done everything on this hole. With Hunter, <laughs> I like airballed it and went like 30 feet past. Oh no. Trevor, I like, I had a same, similar putt like that and I just nailed it dead center. Oh, and then I just hit the cage. There you go. So now I did all of it. Here you go. Whoop. Yeah. Thank you. I'm very proud. I can tell I'm like a toxic BMW owner because <laughs> I have my discs have the BMW yeah, logo yeah. on them. And you, every time. You have one, right? I saw that on your Instagram too. I do. I'm not a typical BMW driver though because it's not like a newer one. It's a 1987 BMW 535i. Yeah. Love that car. It was my dream car like my whole yeah. life. And then I found one on Craigslist and I bought it. Uh -huh. But I can tell that I'm an unhealthy owner though. <laughs> Because whenever people see my putters and don't say anything, I want to just be like, yeah, but did you see that my beam, that their BMW putters? <laughs> like, that's cool though, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. That's so funny. So. so with that, I guess, have you always not used your turn signals? Or did you learn <laughs> to do that? <laughs> no, it was as, whenever I, like before that, when I would drive right, other cars, I use turn signals all the time. But as soon as you get, BMWs actually don't have turn signals, is the thing, yeah. Wait, what? Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, I never, I didn't get the joke. I'm not into cars. So what's, uh, what was the... Uh... BMW drivers are douchebags. That's the, oh, okay. that's the joke. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't figured out what to do on this hole yet. Neither have I. I've tried just about everything and then every single one I'm about 150 feet out. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> sure I'm quite powerful enough for the Annie. So I'm gonna try it again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this destroyer has an interstate batteries logo Ooh, on it. It's pretty go. cool. Oh, that yeah. might do it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, pan out. Oh, I got oh, stuck the tree in the tree. got in the way. Dang. Yeah, Trevor parked this with a stalker. Oh, really? It was amazing. He throws that stalker good every once like, in a while. It was, it was just like that, where it like, looked like it was going to turn and burn, but it was yeah. so high that it panned out. Dang. And it was like five feet. It was amazing. And then I was like, well, let me pull out my wraith and see if I can get past this tree. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> Oh, that's too flippy to turn. See, yep. it's so touchy. Like for somebody with you like, you get such a late turn to get around that. Yeah, tree. and like in order to do that, you've got to have like good spin. Yeah. And I don't do that. <laughs> Not about that spin. I just throw it as hard as I can and get like one rotation by the time it hits the ground. <laughs> <laughs> so do you watch? Do you watch a lot of YouTube, or you just more like just make YouTube stuff? I, wa I watch a lot of YouTube. Yeah. I, it's mainly how I satisfy my hobbies. If yeah. I don't, if I don't have time to go do them, I just watch YouTube videos about them. Uh -huh. and so, but it's also dangerous. YouTube gets me into a lot of hobbies, and then <laughs> I just end up buying more stuff that we have to store places, and then my wife gets frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's so funny. Did it, so, what are you, what are your like top three favorite channels that are not disc golf? Okay. Not disc golf channels. So, dang, that's a tough one. I really love this car channel called Donut Media. Mitchell's a big Donut Media guy. I love Donut Media. Their editing is like inspires me. <laughs> I try to, Silas, who does our editing for our Foundation Nation channel, I like tell him, go watch Donut Media videos and make them like that. <laughs> <'Cause> like, <laughs> it's hard to do that style in disc golf, but like yeah. with other YouTube, like it's so good. Um, and then I also, there's some, some camera and editing guys I really like. I really like this guy called Jesse Driftwood. Oh, Jesse's channel is so fun. It's he's so he's like so inspiring and creative. I, I feel like he has like a similar personality to you. Just like I'm just gonna do whatever. And that like, means so much to me. I like, love him. I, like, he, he he's just like he's like I'm not gonna try and be fit into this form. It's like yeah. I'm just gonna be who I am and make it work with with filmmaking. I, I love him so much. He, like, he his personality is great. Yeah. And then I've recently. YouTube, I can blame YouTube for this. 
I saw a YouTube video and I'm into like restoring stuff. Like I love to restore like my car obviously. And like, yeah. I love to build any I love little projects like that. And, um, I saw, I, I saw a video that there was this guy restoring this old houseboat and I watched the video and sure enough, at the end of the video, he goes fishing. I was like, that's kind of cool. Leads me to another video that involves fishing another video that involves fishing. And here I am. I now love fishing. And that was like, <laughs> it's been like two months since I watched that YouTube video and I bought two fishing poles and like a bunch of lures and like all I want to do is go fishing. That's so funny. So I get, whenever I go into hobbies, I go into them very strong. Yeah. And then sometimes they die out like two months later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, oh. no. I needed to go outside of that tree, David, outside. Yeah, I recently got into fishing. Really? My neighborhood has like a pond in it or whatever That's cool. that you can use. And I went into Cabela's for like the first time ever to look at fishing uh -huh. stuff. The SKU number, like the amount of things uh -huh. that you can buy for fishing yeah, is insane. Yeah, it's it, That's the problem is that like hobbies for me that involve like a setup or like oh, investing yeah. into gear, I'm yeah. all over that. That's why I love yeah. disc golf because I love like the discs. I mean, I might like discs more than disc golf. <laughs> and um, same with guitars. I mean, I love guitars and I love guitar pedals. Fishing, I just like that you can buy different lures and stuff. And I just love being near water. And so, yeah, <laughs> here we go. I'll try to make it. Oh, do it. Drop in there. Oh. So yeah, so being an editor, I know you're like, it's kind of what like foundation needs, but at the same time, it's still your, your creation editing. Uh -huh. Like are, what, what channels are like inspire you either like how they edit or how they teach it to you? Like, is there any like, like if you were to say, cause I know a lot of a lot of, especially like smaller or newer channels, they're like, I take a little bit from this, this, and this, and this. Like if yeah. you take all of these, like that's kind of my look yeah. for editing. Like what, did you, what would you say channels are like that for so, you? Early on, I really liked Peter McKinnon and Matty Hopoya, Dude. which are like, you know, big film Matt, guys. Matty is my- I love him so I much. I love Matty Hopoya's channel. Yeah. <laughs> is that and why so, you got a one wheel? Yeah, well, that, <laughs> I actually went into one wheel for a long time. So like yeah, even uh, before I watched his channel, but he he made me want it more yeah but uh i like so that was why early on i wanted everything to be super cinematic yeah so that's why like our color grades were way too intense the first few edits like <laughs> videos i started editing yeah hunter had to be like hey man like you can't see anything <laughs> and so we had to like have, the, have those conversations get it oh, oh i almost hit two big putts with you <laughs> And so uh, the, that definitely inspires me in that sense. That's why I like our promo videos and stuff. I like to make them like a little bit more cinematic. Yeah. Kind of like energetic like, you, like that. You have an excuse to do that. Yeah. Exactly. That's why I love our promo videos because I can really let my creative juices flow. Yeah. But I also love, um, like I said, uh, Donut Media, their comedy, like their comedy with editing and their timing, I think is hilarious. Yeah. And I love like ironic comedy. And so I like that a lot. Sweet. Oh, that um, putt, like if you looked at it from here, that putt looked beautiful. Oh, uh, it was in. <laughs> I don't know how this got here. There must be a hole in the bottom of this basket. Like yeah. at, uh, oh yeah, it's like falling it out. Was. Like they um, welded it back together and then a, put it in a <laughs> disc golf pro tour event. But yeah, I love, so I love uh, that. And then Jesse Driftwood, I think is really good about like, it's not about the gear. It's yeah. not about, you know, your skill level. It's about like, making making what you just love like, yeah like making an experience out of yeah. everything you do and that's what i love i like try to make sure that with our videos i'm like like because we're just a bunch of friends goofing off and hanging out yeah and that's why like for a while i tried to bump up the quality of our videos and like tried to do second cameras and try to like make everything really intense shallow depth of field and stuff like that to make it look as cinematic as possible yeah then I realized that like, it's like what's the purpose you, of your video? Whenever too? you watch yeah. videos that look like a movie, like you're not there with those people. Yeah. And I got some inspiration from like other big YouTubers, like Mr. Beast and stuff. But, like they just, they purposely use cheaper cameras. Yeah. And and stuff. And then what we did was one day we were going out to film a video, and I was like, let's just leave the other cameras here. And I'm just gonna grab my camera, slap on a big fat zoom lens, and let's just go shoot a video just us three one camera yeah and we did that and i noticed the energy of the video came through the screen so much better yeah and so that's what i'm that's what i'm about now 
it's less about like trying to make the most cinematic masterpiece possible and more about like how can I make this moment that we're all having like every all of our subscribers and our viewers are like we want them to be our friends with yeah. us in that moment yeah so like I want whenever someone's watching to feel like they're our friends like in that moment with yeah. us and so that's kind of what I aim for that's where I kind of get like Jesse I feel like is really good with stuff like that Jesse yeah. Driftwood so that one, that's it right yeah. there just, oh, just right I'm feeling, there. I'm feeling the no water now. Oh. <laughs> Starting to get dizzy. Well, you only got one more hole. Yeah. And I think you should ace oh, it. it. Oh, I was waiting. There are some kids walking across. <laughs> they're, they're gone now. What'd you throw in here? I have a T Bird. T Bird. Oh, an Eco Star T Bird. That's cool. Yeah, an old Eco Star. That's Mitchell, sweet. Mitchell, every time I play with it, him, Mitchell prays that I lose it in a tree and he can come back the next day. And <laughs> <laughs> that is sweet. I bet that fly's nice. Oh, it's beautiful. Like, it's like the most beautiful, like, understable disc. Yeah. Like, understable rock. Yeah. In T bird form. That's this. A, a, a overstable disc that has been beat up to fly understable is way yeah. better than just an understable disc. Yeah. Flies different. But the kids came back out. Right. Yeah, Maddie, Maddie Hapoya, like, his stuff's so good. Yeah. I think he's got a great personality. I listen to his podcast. He just started a podcast Dude, yeah. recently. I love it. It's so it's, great. It's funny because like, so I work, I work in the office Mondays and Tuesdays, and then I work from home the rest of the week. Uh huh. And I'm like bummed because it comes out on Tuesday and like I want to listen to it when it comes out. Yeah. Because I don't want to wait. But at the same time, it's like, I don't want to listen to the audio. I want to like watch it. Oh you yeah. You know, because it looks yeah. so nice. It does look really nice. He's and got so it. I'm just like, I want to be able to put it on a screen but I can't do that when I'm in the office. You know? Yeah, I know like, he switched over to DaVinci for a little bit. I, I, don't, yeah. I don't know if he's still with- yeah, Oh, he keeps going back and forth between Premiere and Final Cut. Yeah, and then, okay. And then he just made a video just now, just like how he just can't stand Premiere. And he's like, <laughs> I can't recommend it to anyone. Like, yeah, you if you're your getting into- to crash. If you're getting into, if you're just now getting into filming and you want to edit program, anything but Premiere. Uh-huh. <laughs> so it's like, but his new editor now, Isaac, I loved Teppo. Yeah. But Isaac is so funny. Yeah, I think he's pretty funny he too. So funny. Teppo is a, a really, just seems like a sweet guy. He's a cool dude, yeah. That is too low. Way too oh, low. Oh, but it's getting some glide though. Yeah. That's okay, you got those putts. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, this is what I'm doing here. I'm gonna go and throw the shot I wanna throw instead of the one I should throw. <laughs> I'm going 11 time Casey Rock. Oh, just baby. because I want to throw this disc. Oh, baby. And let's hope I don't throw it into a car's windshield. <laughs> oh, no. not that stable. Oh, no, it's not that now stable. That's a little anymore. less stable. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, it's not cracked in half. No, I think it looks. 11 fun. time. Hopefully, <laughs> it is not cracked in half. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I started, I, I started in Premiere. Yeah. And um, like a lot of people, well, I started an iMovie. <laughs> that, that's actually, nice. I lied. I didn't only edit one video before working at Foundation. Whenever I was in high school, I went through this phase where I would do like, I would invite some of my friends over and I would like do music sessions and record it on my dad's like handy cam and would edit an iMovie. But yeah. I just like would like clip things together. Like didn't do anything crazy. I uh -huh. more cared about the audio engineering part and so I did some like music stuff with video, but uh, I, um, I used Premiere, signed up for a class in college my last semester, because I thought it'd be fun. Yeah. That was like advanced color grading. Apparently, I, I was never good at school. I didn't <laughs> read the full name for the class. Uh -huh. I got to class and it was called like advanced color grading and editing and DaVinci Resolve. <laughs> and I was like, what the frick is DaVinci Resolve? <laughs> and so, <laughs> that class was literally just an intensive on this program. I was like, I don't want to start using a different software. Like, yeah. I just got good at this one. After two days in the class, I was like, yep, I'm switching to this. Because it was just DaVinci's like... DaVinci's so good. It's just, it makes so much sense. And yeah. it is so good. And it doesn't crash every five minutes. Yeah. And it auto saves. Yeah. <laughs> That's the biggest thing. It yeah, auto saves. Yeah. And so, since I edited with it, um, whenever Silas, we started to get him to edit with us, I said, hey, if you're just getting into editing, just go ahead and start learning in DaVinci. Yeah. Cause it's the future. Like, yeah, cause, be well, that's, that's what I was like. I was like, I've, I've never edited before. Cause like yeah. the main criticism is like, if you've edited in Final Cut and uh -huh. Premiere, then there's a big, oh Ooh. baby, I thought that was it. <laughs> uh, there's a big learning curve for DaVinci because it's just different than yeah. Final Cut or Premiere when those two, you can pretty much go yes. back and forth. They're pretty similar. And I was like, 
Well, I'm gonna have a learning curve no matter what because so I've go never, ahead and start I've never about edited it in my life. So That's I was like, smart. so I'm just gonna start with DaVinci because everyone says the only downside is the learning curve coming from yeah. them. Yeah, it is very different than other editing software. So yeah, but yeah, so. Silas started editing with it. Now he's taking some classes because he's actually going to school for um, like digital media. Uh huh. So he started taking cl some classes in other editing software, but he's still like DaVinci Resolve is his main thing. And Trevor, he started getting into editing. Oh come on! Oh, no, woo, that's a good bid. <laughs> Trevor started editing because he went where we hired our one of one of our newest big employees. Uh, all business Brad, we call him. He took over uh, Trevor's old role of managing the warehouse. So then Trevor went full-time content and more specifically short form content. Uh -huh. And he also started editing his Trevor Stobb show as well. And so he was getting into editing and I said, go ahead and use DaVinci Resolve because it's, it's gonna be the best thing I can teach you on because I know it the best. Yeah. And it, again, it's the future. You should start using it. So he yeah. uses it. So all three of us use it. Hunter, he probably has been editing out of all of us the longest. Um, he uses Premiere Pro. Yeah. And will not switch because he edits yeah. like he edits like our behind the door, like behind the scenes vlog thing and, yeah. and stuff like that. And he'll stay on Premiere Pro. So basically it's just a toxic work environment where like he's constantly like, oh, you should just use Premiere and it's like way better. And we're just like, blah, 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 blah. And we're just a bunch of yapping dogs back and forth. And it's, you know, it's a fun time. <laughs> There we go. I made the last putt. That's there all that matters. There you go. Let's see if I can, if I can uh, mirror this. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Literally same exact thing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So last question. Yeah. Um, what is one hobby or interest that people wouldn't guess or know about from watching Foundation? Ooh. I, I guess we've talked a little bit about guitar. That might be one, but is yeah. there another one? I talk about music a good bit on like our podcast. I would, I mean, I don't think I look like a fishing guy. Yeah. And like now, I think fishing is very cool. Yeah. And so, I don't think cool people think fishing's cool, but <laughs> <laughs> I would say that's like the biggest surprise. Like people would not guess that I was into fishing. fishing. Yeah. Sweet. Well, thanks for your. Yeah, no problem, man. You're definitely like it was super. I'm fun. not gonna lie. I told I told Trevor and Hunter, like, no offense to you guys, but I'm fully expecting the Connor interview to get the most clicks. Out of it. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's that's everyone sweet. Everyone wants to, everyone wants to know about you, man. That's my boy.